Welcome to Albion TV. I am the chosen one, and I am joined today by Bogle and Nomad Poncho. Today, we will be going over new player builds, taking questions, and giving some tips and tricks on how to get started in the world of Albion. I know that many of you are familiar with Nomad Poncho, but for those of the audience who are not, uh, Nomad, why don't you give a, a quick introduction on who you are and why we brought you on to tell people about how to stab people. Okay, uh, so Nomad Poncho is my Twitch name. Uh, as you can see in game, my name is actually Stubber. That's because I had my character before I actually started streaming. Um, I've been playing since the, the first beta is actually in early access all the way back in 2015. I have copious amounts of, I would say useless Albion knowledge, but it, you know, it comes in handy in places and over on my stream, I often answer a lot of questions for any of you guys. Um, I'm also a combat playtester for the game. Uh, I've been on the round table for a long time too. So, you know, I, I have a lot of involvement uh, with the game and, and I'm always happy kind of trying to share whatever knowledge I can with, with anyone that is interested and wants to know about it. Uh, hence me being here today with uh, Shozen. Sounds good. Sounds good. And uh, Bogle, you're going to be helping us as well. We're going to be showing off a bunch of different things, such as the Destiny board and how to get started in that, as well as I, I think we're going to look at three different builds. Correct, Stabber? Uh, yeah. We, so we we're going to go through and talk about uh, in one of the segments, just some of the starting builds uh, to go through and, and just talk a little bit about kind of the different areas you can go into from the Mage Tree, the Hunter Tree, the Warrior Tree. Uh, and, and kind of how you can play the game without worrying too much about running specific fame farm builds and then trying to pay for all of your fame through credits, which is uh, honestly just not necessary for a new player. It's one of the really nice things as a new player is that you don't have to pay for anything. You can just kind of unlock everything progressively as you play the game. Yeah, that's uh, the way I liked to play. I mean, I have been using the same build since 2017, so that is fairly capped by now but uh i, I know you were going to tell me that my build is already wrong that i've been using the wrong one for quite a while and uh, <laughs> do we want to go over how players can make builds what tools they need to be aware of what resources are in the game to help them do it i know that it can be quite daunting early on when you open up that destiny board and are greeted with more options than you a lot of options. There's a lot of options yes. right off yeah. the bat. Do we want to go over explaining that just a little bit and uh, let the people know or the new players know what's going on with with the Destiny board? The, the Destiny board can be a little bit complex for sure. Uh, my fiance cried when seeing it for the first time and now doesn't play Albion. So yeah, it's uh, not it's not all there for everybody. Um, it starts from the center. Uh, there's there's two really important ones to know before you get into any of the gear stuff. Is the very top line. Uh, which is actually your adventurer line. And as you get any fame, can be gathering, PvP fame, crafting fame, all of it, um, it all counts towards your adventurer fame. And that's what you're going to need to wear higher tier mounts and bags. So obviously that's quite an important one, but something you just get passively playing the game. Uh, the second line is actually through the combat tree where you go to your revert. Reaver is another really important one for new players because it, it really matters that you only fight mobs that you're capable of fighting through Reaver. You can, of course, fight mobs higher than that, but what you'll actually end up with is a reduced amount of damage uh, and defense versus them. So it's a lot more efficient for you as a player starting out to just kind of do the dungeons that you have the Reaver for. So if you're tier three uh, Reaver, go do those tier three dungeons until you hit tier four. It progresses really fast now. There's a lot of catch up mechanics in the game that are really useful. Um, and then past that, you just have the different trees to unlock. So going on that first trainee fighter um, node from the center, uh, you start off with a choice of a sword, um, a bow, or a fire staff, um, which is where some players get a little bit confused because, for example, the, the mage one's pretty self-explanatory, given that you get a fire staff and you want to use that to unlock all of the mage weapons, um, which are all kind of magical focused. Uh, the bow confuses a few people because that takes you to the hunter tree where mm -hmm. you then will be able to use daggers and spears. So some people find that a little bit strange, but obviously it takes you right there. You need to use that bow first. And then at tier three, that's where you look at unlocking the individual hunter weapons, such as the melee variants and everything else. And then the same thing for the warrior line. Um, that's where you're going to get access to your, your tanking weapons as well as your you know axes and, and crossbow stuff through there. And also, again, very similar for the plate lines as well. Uh, you just have to wear a chest piece. Um, you don't actually have to wear the whole thing in tier two, just, just the chest piece for the correct uh, place for you know warrior, mage, or hunter. Unlocking that will take you to, the uh, again, the tier three journeyman plate fighter, for example. And then moving past that, you get access to unlock all the individual armors and kind of level them up as you uh, as you go along. 
Um, and the only other thing to note there is there's two levels, mastery and spec. Mastery lets you wear higher tiers of armor uh, and higher tiers of weapons. Also might let you unlock some new skills as you progress through weapon trees. Specialization essentially just makes you a little bit stronger in the stuff that you're already wearing. So for example, being max spec in a, uh, in a node would actually give you 200 IP, which is basically the, the equivalent of wearing two tiers higher. So you could be wearing you know, an equivalent tier six armor when in fact you're only in tier four because of your specialization. So obviously that does come in really handy and is very useful for, for kind of doing the same content that you want to do, but for a little bit cheaper is how I like to look at it. And so this gives you one of those incentives to max out one of the skills that you like rather than just go completely and learn a little bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, I think I definitely recommend for a new player to unlock almost everything to tier four to at least get yeah, stuff to go. everything to tier four so you can yeah. figure out what you want to do. All yeah. the different weapons really do unlock at tier four. Mm -hmm. At tier three, you're still locked to a very few. And like yes, you said, yeah. that's where you start picking your specialization and the weapons mm -hmm. themselves and the different trees. But that can be done very quickly. Getting from it three can, to yeah. four is very fast. And uh, we can show you a couple of different ways where you can do that. Yeah, so I mean, the zone we're standing in right now, for example, Fractured Ground, um, is actually a tier three zone. And there is a very pretty uh, chest area here over to the left side. Um, you have some really nice um, mobs there in a little environment where you can go kill them. And, and again, you bring a tier three weapon with you, you'll get to tier four there in absolutely no time. Um, and then as soon as you're tier four, you can use that to kind of level up to get to, uh, to tier five. What I would recommend typically for most people is to try and get tier five or even unlocked perhaps before they leave the 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 Royals at least, because the, mm -hmm. a lot of the Black Zones are tier five and above. Um, so you really want to get to tier five Reaver in the Royals if you can first. And obviously Fractured Ground is a tier three zone. As you move through, there's other blue zones as well that are tier four. Um, and there's a couple of tier fives in the yellow zone. So you have multiple options to kind of branch out to once you hit that tier five Reaver. So if you want to do safe kind of PVE in the Royals, or if you want to risk it, but for much better reward in the Black Zone, which I, I suppose we'll get into a little bit later, but they, uh, they recently did an update which added a lot more kind of valuable roaming mobs and stuff to the open world. Um, and obviously just being out there, you get access to, to better fame and, and better loot. Yeah, we were talking a little bit how we want to show a little bit about the black zone at the end of the show and mm. show people how you can at least use the tools to navigate. But I feel like maybe we should start a little bit on some of these different builds and how yeah. they actually work, or at least the, the value of gear and uh, how you can really make some early choices to not give up so much. Uh, we yes. don't recommend going out in the most expensive gear you can purchase. Sometimes it's better to, to go in something a little bit easier. We're out in flat four right now, and uh, I'm using the spear build that you showed me. Yes, yeah, so the spear build is actually one I recommend to, uh, to a lot of new players. Um, I find that a lot of people come around, they start playing Albion solo. And then, then you start to look for a group, but maybe you don't want to just accept a, a guild invite straight away, or you want to kind of feel the game out and feel what you like to do. So a lot of people start solo, and there's a few builds you can use to, to do that. Um, so I figured we'd, we'd have some different ones here available for each of the kind of trees. This one um, that I'm on here now is I, I actually run this even at endgame PvP in tier 8. Um, but this is a really good one that you can run right from the start all the way through uh, for the Hunter build, um, which is just kind of designed to be a nice little build to to progress the early game with uh, for the hunter tree. So you're wearing leather armor, you have a, a spear on, um, and it kind of has some nice kind of sustained damage, everything. A um, couple of uh, things people always ask why you run a hunter jacket with a merc jacket. And that's, for example, if you reflect damage, it counts as your damage going out of people. So say if you have a lot of damage coming uh, right at you, you can pop your hunter hood, pop the merc jacket, and then you get healing from any damage that's dealt to you. Also the uh, forest of spear skill, which is this one. Um, that ticks every 0.3 seconds is, again, very nice for doing damage to kind of proc that Merc jacket. Um, I'm using the Lifesteal passive right now and also Lifesteal food. So that, again, just helps you really kind of tank and brawl your way through as a, as a, as a, as a bruiser to, to, to kill the mobs and, and kind of progress on this, uh, this tree. Um, one of the other ones we had to show off is, again, very similar. It's actually a curse build, which is used by a lot of people in PvP. Very high damage. Can kind of considered a little bit of a glass cannon build because it does a lot of damage. Um, but you have your, your curse sickles to stack up. Uh, you have your pierce beam, which will take people's armor off. Um, and then you have your curse bomb, which actually does uh, heavy, heavy amounts of damage. Um, you have to do a bit of stacking with the curse. Yes, yeah, a little bit of stacking. On, get your, uh, 
your stacks up. But if you can get four stacks on a player, it takes a, a good yeah. chunk off early Even on. Even just persistent damage, yeah, it's really good. I mean, these are three builds yeah. here that have really good persistent damage as well as kind of, you know, good good damaging ease. Um, I mean, the final example here as well from kind of the warrior line that we went to show with is actually the, uh, the Great Axe 2. Now, I mean, the Curse you can use with the Mercenary Jacket as well. The Axe you can mm -hmm. use with the Mercenary Jacket. It's a great little sustain build starting out. The Soldier Armor, though, for people Curse. that are wanting to level up plate, which is kind of the meta right now, really, for anyone using like a, a Bruiser weapon, you use Soldier Armor or Royal Armor, which gives you some energy back too. Um, it's, it's just a really good uh, piece of armor. It's really taking a lot of damage. And then the Soldier Armor... When you press the ability, any any hits you take boost your damage too. So soldier armor can lead to some pretty explosive damage on a lot of these weapons, uh, kind of main abilities, uh, mm -hmm. which is really nice to use. Um, and, uh, yeah. Like you were talking about how you can use the mercenary jacket with both the curse and the spear build. Yes. yes. As they both have very quick attacks, and mm -hmm. so when you start using them, they really work well in conjunction with the main skill bloodlust uh, that you get with the mercenary jacket there especially the curse which you can stack up in a number of ways even using grudge your auto attacks yes. and the curse the vile curse to really start stacking up those very quick hits and get all of your health back so you don't have to have a lot of downtime while you're pve -ing. That's it, yeah. So there's the, the mercenary jacket activating it here. I just kind of heal up as I go. And it can really help out when you're a newer player and you don't have as much specialization and you are running lower tier gear. That healing can just help you kind of push through the PvE and stuff. And again, all of these builds are also very effective in PvP too. So, you know, if you kind of meet another lower level person in the open world, you can try and fight it. And that really comes into why you want to run something like if you're going to the Black Zone 4.1. Because, you know, this this set cost me, uh, each of these sets cost me around 50k silver. Now, mm -hmm. 50k silver is very inexpensive and the rewards that you get from even being in the black zone um are, are very good you'll make it back in, in one solar dungeon realistically um if you complete that and there's a lot of open world objectives you can you can kind of be going for luxury goods um, out in, out in uh, hidden treasures in the world um there's a little avalonian drones out there now and even some of the open world mobs are uh, are really good um so it's 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 definitely a, a good one to do and if you're losing your 50k uh it's it's not a big loss and i think it's important realistically for uh for new players to recognize that you have a value in your gear and and you know if, if your gear is 50k you know or if you went for flat you could probably get down to about 28k in all honesty you know the cost of a tome of insight it gives you it gives you 10k fame it costs about 28k so in terms of value if you just get 10,000 fame back which you can get in in one of the, the the bosses that spawns in the open world now um you've you've already made that set kind of value back you might not have got it back in silver but you have value out of it so you can get value out of a set in multiple different ways. It doesn't have to just be silver. And, you know, if you're going to, to PvP and if you die, as long as you can kind of get the value out of that set before you die, then then you've, you've really made it worthwhile. So some people get really tied up in the thought of dying and then losing their gear. But you just really have to think of your armor the same way you think about your potions or your food. They're all just consumables. And all you're trying to do is is to, to fulfill an objective or a goal. As long as you've made it valuable, as long as you've made it worthwhile, um then it's absolutely uh it's absolutely fine that you've died um you know people don't typically hold on to sets forever in uh in this game it's not like your traditional mmo where you kind of work really hard get a set and then you have that set with you forever right you don't keep it forever it's really just it's like ammo in other games yes yeah with, like... i mean the, the only exception i suppose would be hardcore expeditions which are complete mm, pve environments yeah. there's no risks there so you know those sets you can have there are places in albion where you can set up a really nice set and really feel some pride in having that set and then earning it and buying it and, and not risking it out in pvp but for, for, for the most part in in, in follow pvp and around the game you're, you're going to try and want to just really see your armor as a consumable to to be used for a purpose and uh, I want to mention real quick that the gear that you're wearing is not the flat four that I'm wearing. Your 50,000 silver build is a 4.1 yes. build where I'm in a flat four. It's about, I think we're about 150 IP away from each other here. Yes. But it's, if you're going to go out and PVP, you want to be able to clear a little bit faster and you want to be able to have a bit more um, oomph when you attack as if you're mm -hmm. going to be in the yellow zones around your city and you're just getting started and you're just learning how to play you can still use the flat four it's yes. very I mean, I mean you can get I mean, under, so under 10k you can get started yeah there's, there's there's multiple ways of doing it you could just start with a flat four set which is going to be incredibly inexpensive and as you go and do these solo dungeons you're going to get like a lot of runes uh from those from those places right or open world or group dungeons you're going to get a lot of runes and you can use them to enchant your gear 
Um, or if you want to, you can always uh, just buy the gear outright and you sell all the runes and stuff that you get. It's, it's really up to you how you play. Um, I mean, when I first played, I would just sell everything I got from PvE, PvP, and I just sold all of it to make money and buy the things that I wanted. I didn't do any gathering, any crafting. I, I live sheerly off kind of being a, 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 a PK, right? Which is one of the things I really like you can do in this game. You can craft your armor if you want to. You can gather it. You can, you know, trade. Or you can just go out and kill uh, other players and, and take their loot. Or you can go do dun dungeons and sell the loot you're getting. There's a lot of ways to get started now. And it really does kind of facilitate everyone. But I think, you know, starting in solo dungeons as your solo, uh, like trying to figure out what you want to do in the game, getting everything unlocked, and then starting to look for a group. And, and that's one of the really nice things about these builds um, is you can very easily transition them to kind of different different weapons and different builds. For example, if you're starting off on the Hunter Tree with a Mercenary Jacket, a, a group build would be better off for, let's say, a Hellion Jacket, because that's life steal instead of a kind of a hard healing, so you won't get healing sickness when you get healed from a healer, which is quite detrimental. Um, you know, you can swap the Hunter Hood out, which is quite a selfish defensive, to maybe more of a utility item, like a Stalker Hood, that's going to mm -hmm. increase your damage and also pierce, you know, someone else's uh, resistances if they're below half health. Um, you know, you might want to swap off Wonderlust. I mean, you can still use Run on Wonderlust if you really want to keep the same shoes. Or you could swap over to something like Scholar Sandals, which I know is uh, one of Chosen's favorites, where you get some energy back and also it allows you to run through crowd control effects uh, if you don't want to be affected by them. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways. And I think it's one of the cool things like that you can do is when you start off in a build, it's very easy to transition to other stuff. You know, if I've got to that Tier 4 Hunter, I can, I can easily just get a dagger up to Tier 4 as well. And then I can swap and run a blood letter, for example, if I, you know, if I wanted to. It's very easy to to swap items out in a group kind of context and then go and do that activity. Um, same thing if you wanted to do two v two hellgates, you might be wanting to wear more like cloth and be very high damage instead, because that's more about the damage exchange there in in five v five or ten v ten. A lot of people tend to wear a lot more plate because you're a lot more resistant to damage. Um, and instead of wearing shoes that run, you're more likely to wear a shoe with a, a dodge roll or something to, uh, or an iframe to try and avoid damage. Um, but it's very easy to swap and change all these things out as you get playing through the game. And, and really all it takes is that knowledge of of uh, what's going to be good for this instance. And that's where being in a group is, is really useful for, because you can kind of share that information with each other. And that's one of the things that we should uh, mention really quick. When you're leveling up one of these items, you're leveling up everything else in that line as well. So you ha you're gaining the access to all the other plate shoes, for example, when you put on a pair yes. of plate shoes. You're, you're gaining all of the access to all the, the different cloth chess pieces when you put on a cloth chess piece, all of the axes when you wear an ax. So you're not really completely limiting yourself by leveling something up. You're, you're leveling more than one thing up, and it does give you the option to use more than one type of skill. Now, you will create mastery in a very specific uh, item, which does start to play a role as you level up and get further down your tree. And we discussed this earlier, it can add multiple like uh, tiers to your, your item power. You can gain an extra couple hundred item power. It, it, it can really add up over time. Yeah, I mean, every that's the nice thing about Albion, is, and, and that's why the gear isn't as important, because all the progress you make stays with your character. You can't lose that. You can lose your gear, you can lose your, your inventory when you're out doing full loop PvP, but you will never lose that progression on your character. So, I mean, that always stays with you. And like you said, if you say are leveling up one weapon, like, let's say, the Great Axe that we showed early, earlier right which is amazing damage for for group gameplay say if you wanted to go out and maybe gank with your friends and, and try and catch people in, uh, that are trying to transport stuff around the open world you could maybe swap over to the bear boys instead and because you've already invested in that mastery in the uh the axe line you can just put that pair of bear paws on the same tier that you've now got to with your great axe and, and use it to the same effectiveness you know just not going to have as much uh sort of I, I item power in it because you're you don't have the same specialization but because you now have a higher tier kind of bare paw to equip then you could initially equip on uh on the great axe you can just get straight stuck in and, and start leveling that stuff up really fast too so um the, the one thing obviously is, is really nice is just that you share those skills across all of those weapons so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you pick up a different axe for example there you're going to have all those skills you unlocked with all axes uh going up through the tree uh, Bogle's uh, poking me and saying we should explain a little bit more about IP. I think we kind of just brushed over that and just mm. said the words I IP yeah. and not even described it as item power. Um, yes. You can open that up and describe how that makes you more powerful if you want to give a quick lesson on that. Yeah, so I mean, basically, item power is uh, the kind of the strength of your gear. In the case of armor, you're going to have more health, you're going to have more energy, you're going to have more resistances. Um, and then in the case of weapons, you're typically going to have more damage, uh, more crowd control duration, for example, if you're running a stun weapon, 
Uh, if you are running weapons with utility like a pierce, it might have more of a, uh, a pierce to take armor off players. So that you gain item power in a couple of different ways. When you tear up, you just gain 100 item power uh, when you increase uh, at your tier from, let's say, tier 4 to tier 5. If you were to swap over from, let's say, a regular non-artifact uh, jacket, like the, the mercenary jacket we're wearing, um, going up to something that has an artifact component, which are kind of items you can find out in the open world or uh, in dungeons or in some of the instances around the game, um, those actually have also increased item power as well um, to the point of like the Avalonian gear, uh, which is actually also basically you can consider it like being a tier higher even at the mm -hmm. same tier because you get 100 bonus item power off that and then finally your specialization where for example if you were to have something maxed on spec you'd have a bonus to 200 item power which like we discussed earlier is, is like two tiers above um so really it just increases the strength you know more damage you take less damage you do more crowd control um so obviously as you level up and you're wearing higher tier gear um you really start to feel that strength and fighting those same mobs you were before or maybe fighting other players and stuff um there's a few things probably to notice uh, or to, to note about it. So right now in the game, crowd control scales a little bit better than um, uh, sort of crowd control resistance does on mm -hmm. armor. So as you get higher and higher in IP, then you'll get more crowd control. And you're, you really feel the effects of those stuns. They last for a lot longer. Um, I don't know how long that will continue for or, or, or whatever, but that's, that's where we're at with it right now. Um, and then also, I guess a couple of other things with uh, kind of the, we said about the increased stats, like your health and your your armor. Uh, you actually have different kind of attributes for that on your armor too. So a lot of people still uh, are unaware of this that your helmet is actually the place where you get the majority of your energy uh, from. So your the, okay. the most energy you have on your your build and the most amount of energy regeneration actually comes from your helmet. Um, Good. So like on know. this, for example, I have a hundred energy on my helmet. Um, and my energy regen is uh, 1.3 for me at my spec. But if I go to the chest piece, uh, the chest piece actually only gives me plus 50 energy, whereas that's all the thing that's going to be giving me my, you know, the majority of my physical stats, like my damage and my, my damage resistance. Um, and then the only other sources of energy regeneration come from your cape, and then maybe some items like you have shoes, some weapon abilities that give you a little bit of energy back. But, uh, but yeah, I'd say, I think that's the majority of IP covered. I think that was pretty good. I think uh, I, I've learned more about IP now. And I think it's time to, to maybe pull a couple of raffles and maybe take a question or two from the audience. All how, right. How many raffles are we doing during the show today? Uh, I don't know, like six, maybe oh, seven. So we'll have more on later too. Yeah, okay. we're going to have a few. We're, we're, you know, I'm, I'm not giving out two gold codes here. <laughs> It's not the way I work. I, I don't right. I don't All set right. people on gold codes. So we have two Fanged Grill and McKay Shen. Now McKay Shen has already claimed their prize. Congratulations, McKay. Um, no, I don't do feed picks. Weird thing to ask for. I would have rather had gold. No, you muted. Uh, no Matt's muted and he's he's giggling. I was uh, I was I was gonna say everyone's definitely gonna call rigged on that one, seeing this fangs in my uh, guild. <laughs> That's definitely going to be a rigged call in oh, chat for that boy. one. <laughs> it's okay. He somehow manages to win most of my giveaways, too. It, it feels like it's always the same people who know how to win with Moobot. It just, uh, they just know Moobot yeah. and they, they make it work for them. That's it. Fang definitely knows how to milk it. All right. Just whisper me to claim your prizes and I'll send out gold codes later today. All right. Um, any questions? Did anybody see anything? I mean, now's the time to ask. If you guys have any questions, put them in Twitch chat and we can look at them as we go. What else do we want to show today other than item power and sort of the, the basics from the Destiny board? Oh, we're going to, like I said, we have these three different builds. We want to kind of show off how they, the different skills in those builds work and synergize together so that you can learn to look for more of those kinds of combinations. You really want to work the combinations of your build to get more out of it. Uh, you can be anything you want in Albion. You can wear anything in, you want in Albion. You can mix and match, but that doesn't mean that everything has synergy. That doesn't mean it's always going to be the, the right thing to do. And yeah, sometimes so I mean, as, you as want to stack player, things, right? Yeah. Yeah, as a new player, there's typically one of the things people like to look in for the builds is, is regeneration, right? So you have items like the mercenary jacket, you have the uh, the cultist uh, robe, 
these are these are typically items people like to wear because it, it kind of keeps that downtime low when you're going through in PVE. Uh, now, an item you can use to, to actually counter this is, uh, is is fish or soup or something like that, where you get basically healing when you're out of combat, which means every time you're not in combat with a mob or, or a player, you'll you'll be healing. Um, so with players, it's a 20 second downtime. So after you've you know been in combat or been fighting a player, after 20 seconds of you not hitting that player and, and that player not hitting you, you will uh, you will start to regenerate um, your your HP. Uh, and if you have things like the fish or soup or something, it will it will keep that up. Now with with mobs, it's a little different. The second that you're out of combat with mobs, you will be out of combat, so you can start healing. Um, so you, you you don't need to have a build with re regeneration like our, our soldier armor build that we were showing before to kind of level up plate armor. Uh, soldier armor is really the best option out of all the plate for trying to PVE and level up uh, because obviously you have that damage that comes through from it. Other than if you're tanking, and obviously there you, you know you have that that ability to to tank for a group with plate armor. But if you're out you know with smaller groups or solo, you might not be able to to kind of afford that slot for a tank that doesn't do as much damage. So. Re regeneration really helps keep that downtime and, and go so that can be a really big carry for for a build um you know your boots can be kind of swapped around a lot we talked about scholar sandals giving you some energy regeneration which can help keep uh, your energy up as you're going through in clear um and then you know you can just use items like soldier boots for example to run through and clear kind of more of the trash mobs you tend to get in some dungeons uh, quite quickly especially the solo ones um and then on helmets and armor you actually have two uh well, the, all helmets and armor share this skill uh, where you can go through and your helmet actually gives you a, a skill for energy regen. So you stop, you stand still and you channel a little bit and that will gain your energy back. So if you want to build that has a lot of energy and you don't want to invest in something like a Limhurst cape or an expensive faction cape, you can just put energy regain on your helmet and that will keep your energy up as you're going through the dungeon. Uh, Mend Runes is another option on your chest piece, which will go through and will actually heal your character and give you energy back so that can be another option if you're trying to level something up a, a piece of armor that maybe doesn't have the best usage in pve you can easily just put mend runes on it and that will still give you really good healing between pulls and stuff as you're going through and doing pve obviously in group combat you won't need that because typically you'll have a tank and a healer uh, so that becomes a lot less important I, all right we I, have we finally started getting some questions in chat bogle do you want to ask a few of them yeah i i wanted to to jump in here and, and sort of pick one up um best places to start as a brand new player like l let's say you stumbled out of the uh, starting area the the cross areas and you sort of made your way to the city once maybe you kind of have your tier four unlocked you kind of know what you think you'll like where do you go next um, so there's there's multiple ways that players like to do it typically players who are playing a little bit more casually and maybe a little bit more uh, unnerved, let's say, by the PvP in the game, uh, they'll start to go through, like I said, following that Reaver level, we'll start to go through the blue zones, which are a maximum of tier 4, and then into the yellow zones, which is tier 5. Now, in these zones, you can't be fully killed. Um, you'll only be able to be knocked down um, by either Faction Warfare or, or regular uh, hard-flagged players, which are a way that players can engage in PvP combat. Um, there's no PvP in the blue zones and only that like knockdown PvP in the uh, the yellow zones. You will drop a little bit of silver, but that isn't actually your silver. It's just something that the game calculates based on your gear um, and the repair cost and stuff that you're going to sort of incur for going down. Um, and that that will be completely risk free for you realistically. So if you if you want to go through there and maybe learn a bit more about the game, you can you can pass through there. And you'll have various places like arena, uh, hunter corrupted dungeons to go through and maybe learn a bit about PvP before you go out into the big wide world um people will go through the red zones because you know at least then you get a number of flagged players which will show up on the bottom right hand side of the map so you can kind of be a bit more careful uh some players like to go straight for the black zone like i said as soon as they get that tier 5 reaver taking a, a city portal out going to the black zone um and then hitting those tier 5 tier 6 zones whatever based on their reaver um to to kind of you know, get out there and start earning some money uh and, and that's a good way to to level up and earn a bit better money than in royals like I said, because you have access to things like the hidden treasures out there. There's the Avalonian drones, which are a new little roaming mob that they added that carries a chest around. And just the dungeon chest there drop quite a lot more loot. So it's a really good one to head out. There's one thing we're doing that, though, is there's some mechanics that we might talk about here a little bit later to avoid being ganked by players that like to be around the portal zones. Obviously, it's a very heavy sort of condensed point where a lot of players are traveling through. So naturally, you're going to have players trying to gank those spots. But there's a few ways to avoid that, which we can we can talk about in a little bit. So mm -hmm. that really your options is going through the the safe safer options in the Royals or going straight to the Black Zone for more risk, um, but but much better reward. And and again, we talked about before, 
if you're risking a 50k set, you can make the worth of that setback within one dungeon. So it's absolutely mm -hmm. fine uh, once you kind of get over that mentality. And I would say, realistically, you're going to die eventually in Albion if you want to get involved in full PvP. And I would always recommend to players that they they make those mistakes and get killed for them. They 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 go through all these issues and they make all the mistakes they're going to make whilst they're in sets that are worth 30k, 50k, rather than waiting until okay, now I'm tier seven, I'm tier eight, now I can finally go out into the big wide world and, and compete with other players. You're still going to make all those mistakes. You're still going to have to learn all those things. It's much better to learn them when you're losing 50k a time. Um, and still getting huge value out of those sets than it is when you're risking sets that are you know 500k, a million silver, or maybe you know depending on how high tier you're going, what what artifact gear you're running, and then all of a sudden you're you're having a much harder time earning off the uh, the set that you've kind of you're wearing in terms of fame or loot or silver or whatever it is you're getting. All right, we had a, another interesting question because you're talking about risk versus reward. Let's talk about some of those risky scams that exist around here in Albion that just always pop up. Uh, everybody <laughs> knows about the dual scam. Yeah. Always make sure that you're checking the silver that they're challenging you with before you engage in a duel. And, you know, be aware that uh, any duel that you may be getting into might not be as fair as it sounds. Let's be honest, you could be getting scammed. Um, are there any other scams you want to just let people know about really quick? Um, so I suppose there's, there's, a, there's a couple of ones we can talk about. So obviously the dual ones you mentioned before, um, basically people in, in, in duels can be, you know, you, you, if you're a newer player, you're not quite sure what abilities they have that might counter you very strongly or anything. Everything is best to steer clear of, of money duels. Even though you look at someone, you think, oh, he's tier four. I can easily beat that. He might have some rotation on his build. He might be very high spec and and, and be able to, to beat you. I know I've dueled people in very low spec before and beat them. Uh, so it is entirely possible. Uh, the black zones, which I, I might write out here and, and, and show real quick. I'm sure we can find an example All right, let's as go, we talk let's about it. Some, uh, um, the Black Zones actually have a uh, uh, a small shrine right outside the portal. So the shrine is like mm. a, a little a little soup that you drink uh, right out right out of a big old vat that you know bubbling yellow liquid. I'm sure it's completely safe. SBI told us to drink it, so we all have been. Um, you, you drink that drink and you go invisible. Way. You drink that, you go invisible, and you you can use that to kind of pass through the portal zone uh, undetected to make sure you can kind of get out of that really busy area without being ganked. Now. The, the problem with this is, is that one, you can only take it once every so often. So when you drink it, you get a debuff, which doesn't allow you to drink it again for a certain period of time. So if you were to drink it and then try and drink it again afterwards, you wouldn't be allowed to. So keep an eye on that. Like you, Once you drink it, you have a small time debuff before you can have it again. Obviously, don't try and use it because you could get killed. Two is when you go out to a portal, sometimes on the floor, you will see... Uh, I can't go out here because I'm locked. But <laughs> um, Two is that if you go outside... Um, to the black zone from a portal, you'll have a protection bubble. And that is designed to keep you safe from obviously immediately being killed when you get out there. You might sometimes see many dead bodies scattered around the floor with shiny loot bags. And I know it's very tempting to, to rifle through the pockets of those dead men to see if there's any valuables left behind. But there's nothing aware, there. There's nothing there. <laughs> there's likely to be trash or maybe some tier four gear. And the second you interact with something, i.e. your body or whatever, you're going to lose that protection bubble. And when you lose that protection bubble, that means that anybody around can attack you. So there's often people that are waiting. They might be invisible. They might be waiting for you to go and touch that bag and open that item. And then that's it. You'll get jumped on. They'll have heavy amounts of crowd control. You won't be able to move and you will be killed. So Although it might be tempting, try to avoid uh, these uh, these shiny bags of uh, uh, on 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 the skeleton bodies there of dead players. Uh, I mean, if you switch on to me here, Bog, you can actually see here as I've just come out. There's um, multiple players we have here. So this is what I'm talking about. They, they like to sit up here. You see these bodies. There might be a little shiny bag there. You go to click it and loot it, and then you can see here they have a mace to stun, a claw to hold, two fiendros which will push you around uncontrollably. They're not too fun. But I'm going to go here. I'm going to click this item. And you see here, I'm now invisible. So, me so too, that's yeah. allowing me to kind of walk around here. These players now can't see me. I'm completely undetectable to them. Be aware, though, if you did dismount and attack them, you would lose your invisibility, but you would still keep the silence for two minutes. So you can't use any of your skills. So this is a really nice protection mechanic they added for you to get out of there. The second you get out through one of the, uh, the zones, it will disappear. You'll lose that bubble. 
Um, but then you can kind of go on your way through the uh, the black zone. And the, one of the key points here really is to try and avoid <laughs> Bogle uh, on the world tour. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> try to off avoid because you went like invisible. Them. So, um, oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can't talk invisible people. Okay, I'm gonna go through to the next map. I guess when I talk about this thing. So one of the big things there is is once you've got out of the portal zone, you're not completely safe. So just try to remember that maybe if you're going along a commonly traveled path that might have gankers on it too. So take a little bit of a detour when you're passing through a zone, run through the forests, run through the highlands, you know, don't follow the road exactly based on where you're going. I'm about to zone through here. I'll tell you when I have. Um, okay, I'm zoning now. So, so it might be better. So I can show you on this map here. It's a great example. Um, so this one here from Limhurst, High Tree Lake. Uh, this is a very favorable one here for gankers. I'm not sure. Can you bring up the map when you're on this one, Bogle, or the mini map? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so so right here, that crossroads in the middle. You see how all those rows connect there. Very very popular gank spot because they know the players kind of are going to want to pass through here and not go through the woods where there is, you know, mobs and and and, and other creatures that are going to attack you. Um, so you can avoid spots like that by like running around the outer edge of the map here, for example, and and, and then you're you're a lot less likely to run into those players that are just looking for for those people trying to take the shortcut through the zone. Um, so that's really Maybe you one can also, one very good one. Uh, talk a little bit about these. Oh, and as bubbles? we speak, there's a death on the map. There's <laughs> a death on the map right as we speak about it. Yep. So. Um, yeah, classic example. Uh, yeah, the safety bubble. So as you come out, you have a, a safety bubble on you. When you come into the zone, it lasts for quite long. Um, it's got quite a big radius on it and it lasts for a good amount of time. If you come out of an instance within the zone, however, it will only last 50 meters away from that uh, instance you've left from. For example, a solo dungeon or a group dungeon. So, so be aware you're not completely safe um, with that bubble and it will expire. Uh, and for example, if someone was to try and throw a poison pot on you or do some damage over time, um, let's get this in good gear. Um, then that could carry over till your bubbles end and then slow you from your horse. Um, again, most mounts here, like we have on the riding horse, has two speeds. It has a gallop, which is when you're you know unhindered, you haven't been attacked, you'll be at full speed. And then when you get attacked, you slow down to the off gallop speed, uh, where you're much slower. I'll get tagged by this mob here. And now you can see I'm much slower. And this is what kind of allows gankers to get ahead of you or to catch up to you. So that's where you're at a bit of risk here. And also on my buff bar, we can, I guess, just mention the uh, debuff we talked about where we can't get portal from the protection shrine here again for six minutes. So what I can do is I'll actually zone back through to the, the area here and kind of show you what I was talking about. Um, where if I try to drink this now, I'm not going to get the buff because I have the, uh, the debuff that stops me from being able to use it. Um, and I can't, I can't take the shrine. And it made me lose my bubble from getting in. I have mm -hmm. seen multiple people die that way when they didn't realize they didn't have that buff available yet and they've gone to click this they haven't got the uh the juice there and then they've been immediately killed for their mistake so you could be a little bit careful with that one but once you once you kind of make sure you're careful with those mechanics and you head out here you can really get out of these portal zones unhindered and kind of start your your journey into the rest of the black zone how far would you go how far would you venture uh, because like setting your first step into the black zone as a scary step yeah. and then figuring out how far you should go is i think something that's hard to to know at the beginning yeah so i mean a lot of the zones around the portal zones are like the tier five zones which are obviously very good for the for the newer players to hit but at the same time they're also ones that are maybe a little bit heavier ganked so just i, I would say the, the ones heading more around to the outer edge of the map are a little bit more friendly than the ones that head inward because obviously those are a little bit more heavily traveled and are more likely to have gankers um so heading heading more away from the center or away from those heavily traveled paths which you will learn eventually there's there's some paths you you don't really know how active they're going to be until you get used to them but um just just the tier five ones that are relatively close again if you went from the portal protection zone where you have the shrine to drink to to keep safe and then going just one zone over to a zone without a portal, doing the solo dungeons there. Worst case scenario, you're very close to one of the exits. And then you, you as long as you've done, for example, one solo dungeon uh, or one group dungeon or whatever content it is you're doing, you're going to be able to come back through and that shrine's going to be there to drink and go safely back to the portal. So it is, it is relatively safe as long as you kind of are careful of those few mechanics. Uh, we have a couple more questions. Uh, people are wondering, what if I go too deep into the black zone? Is there any place where I can store my stuff? Any place where I can get a respite? Uh, th there are multiple open world chests, yeah. Um, if you don't have a hideout or a territory uh, where alliances and, and guilds can actually store their things, 
Um, these these are these are buildings that are actually constructed by uh, guilds and alliances out there to give you kind of a safe spot to be at momentarily. For the rest of us, there are actually uh, chests out there called storage posts. You can see them marked on the map as a little brown chest with a black and red flag on it. And you have to buy the tab there. They are quite expensive. The uh, the outland chests, they, they they I think they're around 250k if I'm not mistaken. So they are quite expensive. But once you pick them up, they're there forever, and you can always drop stuff off in those chests. So it's quite useful to be able to uh, kind of drop your um, uh, chest here. If we have a new player trying to get into this sort of position here. Um, so yeah, it's, it is quite useful for a, for a new player to be able to go in and, and kind of drop items off. If you're not ready to go back yet, or if you want to keep grinding, you can bring enough food and enough potions out with you to, to keep going and then just drop off your loot in those chests to make sure that if you do die, your loot is stored safely. Good advice. Good, good info. All right. I thought we had another one. Let me see what happened to that other question. But it sounds like everybody's just agreeing with you here on how to do this. Well done, Nomad Poncho. Maybe it's good. I mean, I think there's a, there's a, there's a lot of dispute on, on on what to do to level up. You know, what sets to where, where to go, how to how to play the game. Ultimately, it's a sandbox game, and my, my advice is just have fun with it. Honestly, the the new player time is a really fun time in Albion. They have a lot of catch up mechanics you now. They made it very easy for you to progress as a new player and really get stuck into the game so so don't think about it too much just try and enjoy yourself and as long as you're doing stuff that's fun i mean the solo dungeons were very much designed to be run by almost anything as long as you're running once to the correct reaver you'll be fine to get those early levels in and then maybe you're already looking for a guild or a group to get into and then looking for some more group content to, to progress with them a uh, question uh, from chat another one can I play this game completely devoid of PvP? Can I just do it by PvEing? Is there a way to get to the end game in PvE? Uh, maybe Bogle could answer this one. I mean, depends on how you define PvE, right? Um, if you want to do mob hunting and, and going into dungeons and not wor worrying about that, then it is sort of possible from the city there are portals to what is called expeditions and these provide a pve experience that you can do in a five-man group and you don't have to go anywhere um the only kicker is that the fame you get and the progress you have while doing that is a little slower than with the increased uh fame you get in the red or black zones so in theory it's possible but uh I, 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 it, it, is, it is possible. You also have well, hardcore was... expeditions, I suppose. You can trans just sort of transition into, um, you know, so the, and they start to yield a bit more fame mm -hmm. um, and stuff. So it, it is definitely possible if you don't want to get involved in PvP. Um, there is also non-full loot PvP if you're really not interested in the uh, the death part of the game, and and then you know I, you never know you might get a taste for it after that. Um, so it's it's really uh, up to you. But yeah, you can definitely play this game without PV PvP. You know, you could be doing hardcore expeditions and. And kind of the the safe zone area dungeons, and then maybe using some of your money to to buy materials and level up your crafting a little bit. Um, or you could go again gathering and crafting from taking items again in the safe zone. So it is possible. I would say that a lot of the uh, the, the the best content in the game, obviously Albion has a risk reward system, being a full loop PvP MMO. Mm -hmm. So the, the typically the better rewards you want, the more risk you're going to take. So you can definitely do it, but your rewards are never really going to be that high. Um, compared to a player that's going to risk an, an area for full PvP. And there's a lot of things you can do that are completely outside of PvE and PvP. You can do market PvP, which you engage in, Bogle. You've been dominating yeah, I mean, my, the, uh, the, the game why... without ever leaving a city. <laughs> I mean, the reason why I was skirting around the answer there was because I think for a lot of people, PvP is, is a very big part of it. But yeah, you can try to be a crafter. You can try to be a trader. Um, and you can try to, you know, buy stuff on the marketplace, resell it or flip it, move it to a different city, uh, focus on, on producing things. That's sort of all PvE, yes, but it, it really works well, all of that, when you have friends who sort of engage in PvP, right? I think at the core of it, Albion is still a PvP game. Um, and when you have friends who do PvP, then you can sort of focus on, on helping these guys out and... If you're not really a PvP guy like I am, then that's a lot of your playtime as well. But with friends and helping friends out, getting gear, making gear, then it, it really turns into 
the full experience. Uh, we also have a question from a returning player asking us about what the direction of the game is going to be over the next few years. While I can't give you the next few years, I can tell you what the focus of the next uh, content update will be, and that will be reworking the overworld experience, the um, the outlands and royals and where you're just playing in the, you know, the open world, really, just the the between dungeon areas and making the world feel more alive by uh, changing the way mobs are handled and changing a lot of the tiles to make them a bit more I, I, story driven is a hard thing to a say. Bit more here, immersive, but, maybe. Yeah, immersive would be a great way to explain it. But that we've been given very little information on that so far. The developer talk that was a bit of a roadmap just came out two days ago, and you can check that out on the main website, albiononline.com, if you want to find out what the plans are for the next six months. I think it's, uh, they, they definitely they put a lot of work in over the last few updates to bring us a lot of really good instance content and to improve the old instance content. And I think that was really about making sure that with a growing player base, we always have available content, regardless of numbers or, or you know other people having more numbers. There's always some instance content where you can go to get a reasonable fight, you know, with, with the same amount of people. And, and then with focusing on that a lot, I think the, the open world was definitely lacking. So they really wanted to, to take a look back at it now and just do a lot to improve it to make sure people are getting out there and are enjoying the experience and feel rewarded for exploration. And, and that's what the, yeah, the recent update just did now as well with, with the Avalonian uh, drones uh, offering treasure out there, with the spiders giving season points and also quite a lot of loot. And then also with the uh, um, addition of um, the enchantment of resources being much higher and, and everything else. I, typically myself, I go out solo sometimes on a double-bladed staff, which is a good ganking weapon. Oh, here, we have a player to attack. Um, oh, that's that's <laughs> you expect me. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, so it can, it can really be a kind of rewarding experience. I typically pull anywhere from 10 to 20 million silver, even solo when I go out to the black zone now. Uh, so it's, it, you can, you can make a lot of money out there solo as a group it, and, and they're only adding more and more to reward. It. Um, I just want to point out one thing about solo dungeons coming in here, solo dungeons for you new players, they do close behind you after 90 seconds. So after 90 seconds, the entrance will close and you'll be safe uh, to do the dungeon. What some people do is they actually click the logout button. That gives you a 300 second timer. And then people know that once that goes down to 210 from 300, then that's your, your timer room. So you can wait at the entrance here. Just be a little bit careful when you're waiting for that initial timer with the cooldown that you get for uh, getting another bubble once you come inside. Because if you went inside the dungeon, you were on bubble cooldown. Um, and then somebody were to drive you out, you're going to go back outside with no bubble. And if they have a friend waiting there, there's a good chance that, you know, you're going to come out with no skills and they'll just be able to kill you. So so you are you are almost completely safe. You just have to be aware of that. Once you go in, you have the bubble timer. Just make sure that you uh, you kind of don't want to back out the dungeon until that time is up, you know. So if someone comes in, you see them, they're not going to have good uh, skills up yet. It might be a good thing for you to, to space a little bit farther away from the exit and then, and then come back to it to leave. See if I can find a shrine on this one as well. Do you want to go over some of your favorite uh, spell combinations in the game that you find work really well um, in conjunction? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, obviously one of the ones we talked about a little bit right now is the one I'm wearing, which is actually the uh, the mercenary jacket and the uh, the hunter hood. Where together, as I'm taking damage, um, I'm gonna let these mobs get me down pretty low actually, and then we can show you here, nice and easy. Um, so it's, it's one combo that people aren't too aware of usually, but so I'm going to take this. I now have some damage over time on me from this, uh, this archer here. If I put my hunter hood and my merc jacket, I'm going to start healing every time I have damage done to me. Um, I also have forest of spears that I can use with it and you can see my health kind of shoots up with forest of spears. So that's also another really nice, uh, combination on the spear that you have there too. Um, so typically when you're when you're looking for item synergy as you're playing together like we talked about on the axe as well so again the axe uh it, its cues do damage over time with bleeding um so i guess i can clip it here so you can see um so again that damage over time is going to work really well with the mercenary jacket giving you healing back every time those dots do damage and every time you do damage outside of that too um the same thing with the curse stuff uh the cues there we don't have access to desk yet but the, the cues there um, again, do damage over time, so that works really well with the Merc Jacket. Um, there's some other things like on the Cleric Robe, 
um, a, a good combination that people like to often do with some weapons is to use the uh, cleric robe um, in PvP. So say if you were to activate your cleric robe here, you get a complete immunity to damage for three seconds. So if you were to use an ability that maybe someone could reflect or you know might be able to interrupt, you can use that cleric robe to make sure that you uh, you don't suffer the consequences of that. You're blocking any 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 reflected damage back to yourself. So it can be really can be really useful to kind of just allow you to deal huge amounts of damage uh, without worrying too much about uh, your opponent being able to interrupt you doing it. Um, obviously, you are in cloth, so you're less resistances. But the cleric robe is kind of a strange one where. You know, you are relatively weak being in cloth, but at the same time, you you have complete immunity to damage for for three seconds when you have the skill active. So it's a it's a very strong one to wear. Um, and then soldier armor as well. Soldier armor is kind of an interesting one in that you get increased crowd control and damage when you're stacking it up. So when we look at soldier armor, um, every time you take damage, or you know, you're going to put one stack on the soldier armor. If you get ten stacks of it, which is the max, you can get seventy percent bonus damage. Um, and 40% bonus crowd control. So obviously walking into a pack of mobs here, if I activate this skill, you can see it's stacking up. And then I can go ahead and uh, press my E for just kind of huge amounts of damage to, to drop out um, on mobs. I think the Great Axe is especially crazy uh, for me. This is doing 2,650 damage, at, even at 4.1. Um, so that's, obviously that's if, you, good, yeah. if you imagine the boost with 70% bonus damage on soldier armor and you already have 12% uh, from your, your armor itself, or, or 10%, you know, then then you're looking at a bonus 80% damage on that too, which is obviously just pretty obscene and and, and quite devastating. So there's there's a lot of different synergies that you have. Um, one one good one I think to, to point out as well, which is things like there's there's little less obvious ones that people don't really recognize as much, and it's things like ambush on the assassin jacket. So people just think, okay, it's an invis skill and it boosts my damage. Um, so if I go invisible here, I'm going to get more damage, and um, I you know I, I can then use that damage to do. Uh, you know, a bigger burst to somebody when I come out of stealth. But one of the things with that is like you're you're invisible for eight seconds. So really, the value of things like that can be a cooldown spacer. Say if you've got eight seconds before you have your next kind of spell that you really want to use, um, you could use ambush to to wait that time invisible away from the harm of your opponent, and then come back out of that eight seconds and use that cooldown that you've then been waiting for. Or if your opponent activates something like the soldier armor, and you know if you hit him, you're just going to stack up his damage. Um, and, and it, it might just be a really good idea to ambush and then hide from him while he's trying to seek the bonus damage on his soldier armor. Same thing for like scholar robes or anything else. When people activate these abilities where you're particularly vulnerable to heavy amounts of damage, it can just be really good to ambush to uh, to kind of waste their cooldown mm -hmm. whilst also waiting for your own. So there's lots of little things like that to consider too with uh, with utilities. But a lot of this stuff starts getting a lot more advanced, and uh, if I suppose that could be for a later date. Well, I think you just these are a lot of good information the right there. Um, one question that did come up, I think I missed it earlier and it has come up again, is do you have any recommendations on how to make early silver so that you can get that premium that really starts you on your path? Because I've heard, and, and, I, and I do agree with the statement, that once you have premium, it's easier to get premium. Yes, I mean, premium practically pays for itself. You get, you get focus, so you can use the focus to... Uh... You know, get get more silver drops and more fame from activities that you're doing in the open world. You get more um, more gathering ticks if you're gathering. Uh, it, it's just overall, it's a very useful thing to have. And and yeah, if you once you have premium, it really does kind of pay for itself. Um, so in terms of uh, what you can do is solar dungeons here, for example, we actually have a uh, a little green chest. So every time you go into a solar dungeon, you're going to get these chests. They can be different rarity. This is actually the worst type of rarity here. But they can go all the way up to legendary. So one way you can do it is just by doing dungeons and looting. Um, so we have solar dungeons like this where you can go and clear them. And then as soon as you sort of defeat the boss, you're going to be able to kick open the chest. Um, and inside is going to have uh, a selection of some runes and stuff, which you can just sell, and some silver bags. These rewards you get from the ones in the uh, black zone are much better than ones you get in the royals, especially blue or, or yellow zone um, areas. So it can be incredibly worthwhile to come out to the black zone for this. Um, there's also things like the hidden treasures you find in the open world uh, that can offer you a little bit of loot on those pickups. The Avalonian drones we talked about. Gathering can be a really good way even. Um, you can get to tier 5 gathering really quickly. My recommendation to people is always to go through the Destiny board and have a quick look at the gathering stuff there. And you actually um, like can unlock your tier 3 to tier 4 incredibly quickly. 
when you get to tier four, if you just throw on a tier four gathering set, buy an Avalonian tool, which is a bit of an investment being around 80 to 100K, but it's fine because you're not going to lose it. You're going to be completely safe. And then in the Royals, there are special areas or all, all over the open world, really, where there's certain areas that have dense amounts of resources. So if I'm going to look down here at Steel Hide Meadow, for example, um, you can see a little image on the uh, the map. Um, it's the southmost desert place there, um, where there is a, a kind of bonus dense area for hide. So if you head over to that area, they'll respawn very quickly. You just grind that out. Literally in about two hours, you could have the learning point unlocked for tier five skinning. And as soon as you have tier five skinning, you can use that to uh, to make quite a lot of money as well. If you go to places like the Rose of Avalon or even the open world, um, where you're going to be finding various materials to gather up and, and, and make your money. So you can do lots of different ways. I would consider gathering more of an investment for kind of your mid or late game for really making money. Um, but it's definitely a good one to do. That's where I make a lot of my money these days. I, I make around 10 to 20 million silver when I go to my runs on the black zones. It's, it's incredibly profitable uh, to add on to any of your kills that you're getting. Uh, and then also, again, PvE is a good way of doing it. PvP can be very lucrative, but obviously you have the risk there. So you have places like um, Hunter Corrupted Dungeons, um, which a lot of new players start out with uh, as a player. Uh-oh, we have PvP. Oh, that's kind of rope. No. No, I wasted yeah, my that's e. It, that's it. No, that's it. Sad time. So I missed my uh, yeah, I, I missed my skill there, but I was going to try and show you the uh, the the hunter dungeon there. Um, but basically, yeah, you can go into those corrupted dungeons, the one I was about to challenge into, and and the hunter ones again are completely PvP uh, safe. You know, you you have a fight with someone, but you won't completely die off it. You'll just go down. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the advantage there is again, you can loot chests there. Once you go into stalker, we're in a similar situation we talked about before. You're risking very cheap sets that that don't cost a lot of money um and you're potentially getting big rewards from 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 places like that so you know you have also 5v5 content other stuff which i would stay away from more as a newer player i think i think hunter corrupted dungeons and, and and stalker are very good other than that you're looking mainly at pve and gathering and kind of just looting your way uh, to your premium well i would recommend the arenas the non-full loot uh pvp and the five man that you can do it will teach you the spells that you'll be recognizing in 1v1 pvp it's a good way to do it without risking a lot but you can also mm -hmm. do that in the low level hellgates i'm sorry corrupted dungeons as well and hellgates as well so yes there's yeah. a lot of options over there mm -hmm. to learn pvp without risking full loot and you want to do that so you can learn to recognize the spells and the counters to spells that your opponents will use yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, like we said, you're going to lose your gear eventually. You know, you're going to go down eventually. And learning that and, and having that happen to you in, in much cheaper gear is much better for you as a player than for it to happen to you when you're finally up at really high tier gear um, and have a lot of stuff. So it's, yeah, it's definitely good to uh, to just kind of get out there and, and experience the game and, and try not to worry too much about it. Uh, if you Again, risk reward. If, if you're risking kind of a, a PvP and, and PvP environments, you're going to gain a lot more and be able to unlock your premium much quicker. Uh, if you're wanting to just do safe environment PvP and PvE to start with, you can do, but it's going to take you a little bit longer to get your uh, your levels and 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 your your money for premium. I think I did my old character. I I made an old uh, about a week ago to test out what it was like again with just a four one build. So I got to four point one. I took a build out there to the black zone, and I think within about three hours I had one point two million silver just from doing solo dungeons, the open world mobs. Um, and also opening some hidden treasures and stuff, and the loot that I found in the solo dungeons. So, and again, that's 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 a couple of hours, and I I had one point one point two million there, and that was pretty unfortunate on the chest. Even I didn't get very good chests out there, so I'd say that's definitely a lower end too. Um, so, Blackstone, you can make a lot more. You know, if you just had, if you did that for a couple of nights uh, of your week, and that was an account without premium as well, I should point out. Um, but yeah, you, you do that without uh, premium, you get your money up, you do that a couple of nights a week, you only need 8 million, right? So you're looking about a week to get premium for just playing two hours a day, doing quite casually, just solo dungeons and stuff out in the black zone. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 very possible to, to make your premium quite quickly. And then as soon as you have your premium, again, it's just going to be more rewarding doing those same activities. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be even easier to pay for your premium next time. Well, that sounds like a, a good a bit a good bit of advice. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to let the audience know of before we head out? We are about to hit an hour on this show. You've done a great job explaining some new player concepts as well as giving some good tips and advice on how to proceed as a new player. 
anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we go? Maybe even uh, promote your own content. I, I guess I guess I could shamelessly do that at the end here. Yeah. Um, so you guys can find me over on Twitch.tv Nomad Poncho, which I think you can see. I'm gonna. I don't have one hand here. There we go on the screen over there. Um, yeah, mostly I, I do a lot of chill content. I, I try to vary my content a lot, so I do most of the content the game has to offer whenever I can, and a lot of the time I will uh, be out there. Uh, solo and when you see me doing that feel free to ask any questions you have and i'll just try and answer them to the best of my ability i also have a pretty cool community over there i think that when i'm a little busy there's plenty of people in chat that will try and help you out too um and through that as well you can find the discord where uh again we have another place there with a cool community built up where you can ask questions and just sort of share share footage and, and whatever else you need to do but it's uh no it's good we, we built up a good a good uh, a good community over there i think um and I'm, I'm really pleased with where it's gone i took a break from from streaming uh for about a year with some some irl streamers uh, i'm i was with irl troubles um but uh obviously back before when i streamed that was obviously as you know uh very consistent streamer within albion i was actually their first featured streamer which was super cool um so yeah, coming back, the community is growing massively. It's been super fun to be a part of everything. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to see where the game's going. Obviously, everyone has our gripes with some things in Albion and some of the issues with, like, so let's say, combat balancing and other areas of the game. But I, I do think Albion's pacing nicely to, to get on top of these issues. And, and it's difficult sometimes to recognize that as players, um, a lot of these issues going on and, and how things can be fixed. And I, I think they are doing a, a relatively good job of tackling them, even though that urgency that we feel as players may be... Uh, it doesn't feel that way sometimes. Well, we try to do the best we can with communications, and you're right. Sometimes it doesn't always feel like it's the best, but we are working on that. We are aware of the issues, and we try to get on top of the balance issues as quick as we possibly can. Yes, yeah. No, it's good. I, I, yeah, again, I, I'm quite happy with a lot of the places in the, in the game right now. I'm looking forward to some of the upcoming changes with the uh, the Black Zone uh, and, and even some of the stuff in the background. Um, obviously is more tucked away all right well thank you very much uh, i did appreciate your time today and i think you did a great job thank helping you. out everyone here and i think we will be doing this again soon um we will have another new player show next week i hope to be joined by nazori next week we will see how that goes and see if we can't nail down the time and date to make sure everything happens and he's got you just set a very high high bar He's got to do as well as you just did, Nomad. This is going to be hard for him. He's probably in chat I'm, going, I'm, oh, I'm, boy. I, 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 uh, he's, no. he's been taken. I, I, what what is always going to do is going to flip on you. So he'll, he'll, he'll start a conversation real nice, and then he's just going to start drilling, particularly oh, yeah, you. Start questioning me <laughs> about what's going on. Oh, great, great. <laughs> That's okay. Google's <laughs> got the mute button over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm looking forward to that Nazori's episode, really. And I, I think it's great that you guys are starting this too. It's a nice interaction between SBI and the uh, community of streamers that we have here. And obviously, it's good that we have these uh, streamers and these personalities to, to, to share their knowledge of the game with the community. So, yeah, no, thank you as well. All right. And for those asking, yes, you can watch our stream right after the show. It will be available for a VOD. And we will have it on YouTube later in the week, probably as early as tomorrow. So thank you guys for tuning in. We do appreciate you guys coming and watching. I'm going to give one more set of raffles away and announce the, the people who've already won. Albol Maz, you have won the raffle. Whisper me to claim your prize. Drill Fork, you have won the raffle. Please whisper me to claim your prize. Gaming Trucker, Dankers, uh, Two Fanged Grill, and... McKay Shen were our winners today. If you've already claimed your prize, you were all set. You have not won again just because I said your name twice. But uh, if you haven't whispered me already, please do. I have gold for you, and I'd like to give it to you. I'll, I'll collect any untaken gold at the end if you want, along with the 40000 that you said you'd pay me for this episode. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Stuff. I understand. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Thank you guys very much. We will see you again tomorrow. We will be back at 18 UTC with the War Report, followed by another daily show episode. We will be going over all the news of the week, and it's been a very jam-packed week as far as news. I'm sure you guys are aware there is a developer talk out there in the mists. We will be going over and dissecting. We had another patch this week, and I believe there's even more news right around the corner. So thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.